Hi everyone, my name is Eric Lind and I'm a solutions engineer with Telius. Telius is an AI powered decision intelligence platform that greatly expedites the journey from data to decisions. Today I'm gonna to show you how Telius's end-to-end -end capabilities as a self-service and analytics platform can help your business and your analytics teams. Telius is designed to bridge the gap between a traditional BI tools offerings and a machine learning or AI tools offerings all in one easy to use platform. We combine this what, why, how framework to allow your analysts to answer high level questions as well as uncover deep insights in your data and look forward into the future to make better proactive decisions. Everything you're gonna see in the platform today is generally available and there's plenty more we'd like to show you on our roadmap if you wanna to talk to us further. The focal point of today's demonstration is gonna be on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, specifically goal eight out of those 17, which focuses on promoting inclusive growth in both the economics as well as work opportunities around the world. We're gonna start that process in Telius using our natural language search. We're the only provider that has a true natural language search experience. It doesn't require keywords to search on, the, on your data. I can just start typing in plain English, what is GDP by year for the world? And Telius will automatically interpret that, relate it back to our data and visualize it all in one step for an analyst. I can see that massive drop in 2020. Maybe I wanna see how this compares to the world, to the United States compared to the world overall. And I can see that in the past couple of years, the United States uh, has finally gotten back to the point of eclipsing the average GDP growth for the world uh, on aggregate in the past three years. Now, as an analyst, I'm able to answer those questions, get some visualizations, but oftentimes where a BI tool lacks is the ability to answer more complicated questions. Like why did that dip exist or where did that uh, dip in GDP growth most significantly get impacted around the world? As we click on that data point and understand why, that kicks off a Tellius's automated insight or a trend insight. This is gonna give me a summary view of what drove that change in GDP growth in the year of 2020 compared to 2019. I can see the summary view at the top of what the actual and relative drops were, as well as the significant contributors. In this case, the decrease in GDP in 2020 was most significant in the subregion of Latin America and the Caribbean. If I further explore that segment down below, I can see what the actual drop in GDP was, 10.78 compared to the overall aggregate drop of 7.66. And I can also see that visualized compared to every other subregion on the graph on the right hand side. So all of these rank orderings, the insights are all automatically created when a user hits that button on a search graph to generate this type of insight. From here, I can further explore that Latin America segment to look at what are the next level of contributing factors to the Latin America and Caribbean subregion specifically. I can see that income group is a classification about a country level um, relationship compared to the, all the other countries in the world. In this case, the upper middle income countries had a very significant drop in GDP. In particular, the country of Peru was the highest country in that segment where there was a drop in GDP. So now as an analyst, I've gotten to see all of our different data points and attributes scanned in one single click of a button rather than having to comb through dashboards or write custom scripts. I did that in an ad hoc fashion using our search and our insights feature. But Tellius also has a built-in feed capability to intelligently track your KPIs. In this case, if I wanted to track GDP growth on a yearly basis, I can specify those two line items in our Tellius feed system. We'll then build out a forecast for that metric. And any time that the actuals fall outside of the confidence intervals for that forecast, Tellius will track that, run a trend-based insight, and email you the results. So it doesn't even require an analyst to come to the system and ask the question. It's proactive insights delivered to you. Uh, from here, you'll see that by selecting details, it'll take us to another example of that trend insight. But of course, in this case, customized on the, uh, the time periods and the data points that we were looking at in that feed customization layer. Now, from here, as an analyst, you're able to go from the ad hoc question answering to the proactive types of, of question asking. You can also look at Tellius to help provide future looking types of analysis. So uh, even more proactive, this is predictive analytics using our machine learning capabilities. You can create anything from a, a machine learning model in both a classification regression or you know, either type of supervised learning as well as clustering and unsupervised as well as time series regression for forecasting. So all those different model types can be saved, embedded, and the predictions are always gonna be tracked back so you can compare against the actuals and iterate and improve performance over time. Now I wanna go back to, sh to look at the data a bit further that we have for goal number eight, focusing on economic growth, work inclusion, financial growth and opportunities. 
and explore some other metrics in the data sets other than just say GDP. So we have other metrics about say financial participation, and employment rate. Maybe I wanna look at the comparison about those two metrics as it relates to the countries around the world. So I can just start asking the question again, what is the financial participation rate compared to employment rate by nation? And in this case, we see a really interesting opposite trend. The countries that have the highest financial participation often have much, much lower employment rates and vice versa, likely indicating there's a significance in what types of jobs or industries are very popular in the countries with high employment rate and low financial participation. Now, if I add income group to that segment and breakout, I can see in this case, I just changed my question on the fly to look at financial participation by GDP. There's a very large segment of, of countries at the top in the blue for the high income cluster at the bottom for the low income countries. In this case, now I'm getting a different slice of the data all in a matter of a second. And I can see a bit, pretty big outlier here on the graph. In this case, that low income point here, Yemen, is a country that has very low financial participation and much, much lower GDP growth on average compared to every other country in the world. If I wanna take this analysis and save it, I can either add it to a VizPad by selecting one that already exists, as well as download the CSV content, share it with other people outside the platform, or even download as a PowerPoint. And this is a native PowerPoint integration, so it doesn't require a user to copy uh, data into an Excel workbook or anything like that. It is a native integration, so you can apply your own custom design templates that you may already have embedded into PowerPoint very, very easily and quickly. So from here, we've uncovered a couple of different insights about how these other metrics relate to, um, to GDP and growth uh, around the world. We can more easily visualize that um, on a map rather than looking at that as a, a bar graph just by um, changing the type of our question. Our system will automatically pick up on those contents and, and produce that visualization. But we saw that interesting outlier with Yemen. So let's dive back into data and show you how to get data into Tellius and focus specifically on Yemen. We can load data from ad hoc files like CSV or Excel or common file store systems and data warehouses, and you can leverage them in multiple, uh, from multiple sources in Tellius, all in one location. In this case, we're just gonna load an Excel file that has more information about Yemen's financial participation metrics uh, through survey data that the, UN has, that the UN has provided. So we'll load that data file, and that'll take us here to Tellius's data preparation layer, where we can see a snapshot of the data where Tellius is automatically ingested, the column names, the data types, uh, and a few other different things to help make it very easy and seamless to get data into the platform. I can also further explore the summary statistics of my data by leveraging the out-of-the-box features that we have to let's say explore what the breakdown is for these survey participants for who actually has a financial account uh, in a modern type of system. In this case, I can see that a very low percentage of customers or of, of people actually have uh, an account within Yemen. I can do the same thing with household income to look at the breakdown of um, who somebody in the survey has fallen into the, the different segments, um, richer or poorer around the country. Tellius also has a pretty expansive data preparation layer where you can complete a lot of no code or low code types of data transformations. For example, changing data types, finding and replacing different string values, uppercasing, lowercasing text. All these common types of data transformations can be done in a point and click fashion in Tellius. But we also have the ability to create um, more advanced types of transformations using SQL and Python code, all integrated seamlessly into your, your pipelines to leverage the, the more advanced types of transformations that you might need to create and benefit from what your analysts already know today using open source languages in Python and SQL, not a tool specific language. The last step in preparing data for Tellius is creating a business view. And you can think of this like a data model. You're defining relationships between different tables in a drag and drop process. Also, you're able to create your own custom KPIs or calculated columns to help derive more customization from what your data offers out of the box. Now, from there, I wanna focus back on that Yemen data set. We have survey data, trying to understand what's driving, say, the, the people around the country who either don't have an account or maybe wanna focus on the financial opportunities and understand what's driving the poorest segment of, of people in Yemen. Other sets of characteristics that help us define that. And so to answer that type of more complex question, we're gonna leverage a different type of insight that we have in Tellius called a key driver insight. We've already touched on a trend insight. We have a third one called a comparison. But for right now, we're gonna focus on that key driver insight to better understand what drives the poorest 20% segment of the population and better uncover what are the characteristics of those people based on all the attributes in our data. The output of that trend-based insight 
is now gonna show me this result here. On the left-hand side, I can see what features actually contribute to answering that question. In this case, saved in the past year, the education level, the gender, the age, those are the most important attributes to answering that question. And on the right-hand side, we're gonna look at the combination of those attributes to build out specific segments. So in this case, all of the people in this, you know, in this survey that have saved in the past year, have not completed more than primary education, are female above the age of 16, are 3.3 times more likely to fall into that poorest income segment. So there's clearly some sort of disparity around the opportunities that are available around the country. Definitely something worth focusing a little bit more attention on for the UN in both Yemen and other countries that have similar types of, of attributes. So we've now gone through a very advanced type of question answering and an analyst is able to look at the interpretation of a very complex model that's working under the hood. Telius has surfaced that using machine learning and natural language generation to make this easy for an analyst. So now, as an, as an end user, I can very easily share this content inside the platform in our, and you see that share icon with, uh, that'll show up on any of the, the objects that we have in Telius. We also have the ability for an analyst to create dashboards and insights without them having to really know what types of questions to ask. And that'll bring us to our quick start feature. The quick start feature solves that blank slate problem. When you start using a new tool, you don't know where to start. In Telius, you select your data set, the key, country, the key dimensions and measures that you want to look at. From there, Telius will build out dashboards and insights for you without you having to do anything. In this case, this example of a dashboard here, Goal 8, shows you how you can toggle, customize the layout of reports, look at all the different visualization options that we support, and curate things from there. Telius also has the ability to embed content into other applications outside of Telius. So we've walked through all the different major functions of Telius. Definitely appreciate all of your time in looking at what we have to offer and look forward to talking to you again soon.